Yeah. So if you're familiar with digital process, you see a lot of things on the website. They are like a lot of colors on it, a lot of images. And so that is that's a website. That's everything about websites. So what we'll be taking here now is the front end part. Because basically web development is divided into we can say two parts. This is divided into two parts. There's um divided into two parts, front end web development and back end. But in reality, web development is divided into five, I guess. Yeah, four, five. There is the UI UX, that's the design. There is the front end development. There is the back end development. There is the cloud engineering. And then there are other parts involved in web development. But then are in Nigeria and then expect one person to be equipped with like two or three of these things. And so it does divide it into three. That is UI UX design, front end web development, and back end development. Now, so now what's front end? Yeah, let's pull that up from. I'll be sharing my screen very, very soon. Yeah, so everyone can see what I'm seeing here. Hope that's cool with everybody. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah, yes, that's good. Nice. Am I talking too fast? No. No, no. No. Oh, yeah, no. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. So is everybody on their um, PC? Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, yeah. we can see your yeah. screen, but not everybody's on their PC. Oh. I'm not on okay. mine. Okay. I'm not on my PC. Okay, okay, no problem. Yeah, so oh my said. Front-end web development, also known as client development, is the practice of producing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for a website or web application so that the user can see and interact with them directly. Okay, so if you like if you look at this definition, definition just let's just make it straightforward. Front-end web development is known as client as client side development. Okay, so there are different types of development. There is um, client side and then there is server side. So client side means whatever you are building, whatever you are doing, whatever you are creating is on the user's device. Let's say your laptop now. Oh. Um, sorry, please, can I make someone a course so you can help me admit people? Michaela. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I make you um, a co-host? So whenever someone is coming, you can just help me admit them. So I don't have to like, stop and admit them. All right. No problem. Thank you. Okay, yeah. That's done. So in case anyone is coming, just help me admit anybody. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so client side development means whatever you are doing, whatever you are building is on the client side. So client side means on the client's device. So now you have your laptop, you have your phone, there are browsers on it, Phoenix browser, Chrome, uh, Edge, whatever one you are using. So now whatever you'll be seeing on your device, because the device belongs to you. So whatever you're seeing on the device is client side. Like now, this is a website now. And um, this website is on my laptop. I am interacting with it. I am seeing everything on it. Because it is on my laptop, that means it is what? It is client side. But now let's now say there are other things on this website now, like accessing to login now. Let's say I want to log into a website or something like you in a lab website now. You want to log into the school portal. You want to fetch your courses. You want to register your courses. Those are things that you are seeing on the client side. But for you to get all those things, it needs to be hosted on the server. So that's where something called a server side comes in. So now the server side is mostly backend. 
it is always back end. But now that's not our business. What we were handling now is the client side. That means what our client can see, what our client can respond to, what you can touch, what you can feel. Like now you see this website now. I can scroll on the left hand part, I can scroll on the right hand part, I can over over things, I can even copy and do. So now this is me now interacting with the website, the front part of the website. So now that makes me the client. Interacting with it, what I can see now is the front thing. Do you guys understand? Yes. Yes. So if you yes, yes, I am. If you understand, you can just like, this is the yeah, so now this message that um, the client side development is the part of producing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for your website. So now the basics, the basic uh, tools for creating a website, a front end website is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now I'm going to give you like, what I say, a practical explanation of these three um, languages. So now HTML, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Some people don't even count it as a programming language because it's a markup language. Some people say it's a programming language, but then we are not yet to like have that uh, argument. But now HTML now is like the, what I say, the main body, the main human body. Let's say the human body now, the skeleton. You know, you can't move, you can't raise your hand without a skeleton. There are a lot of functions for the skeleton like protecting the internal organs, giving the body structure or movement. Like I have my hand now. If there is no skeleton, I don't think I can hold up my hand like this. My, like, my flesh is going to like fall. So now HTML is like the skeleton of every website. Like there is nothing that is posted on the web. There is no website posted on the web that does not have HTML. There may be let's say, other um, languages, ASP.NET. There may be other things like Flutter Web things like JavaScript frameworks like React. But then the end product of all these languages, all this engine is HTML, because that's the only thing that the web understand. And so HTML is like the skeleton of the web. The, let's say the life form, something holding everything up together, that's HTML. And then we have CSS. So now imagine, imagine a human being now without flesh, without anything, just skeleton. How would it look like? I'm sure whenever you're walking on the street, everyone is going to run away because nobody's used to seeing something with just skeleton. So now if we have a website without CSS, that's how it's going to look like skeleton, ugly. Come let me see if I can get a website without CSS. Um, so I just may take a little bit of time. Let me just get one of my old projects again. I'm um, sorry, I'm wasting a bit of time. Don't be, don't be annoying, bosses. Hi, welcome, welcome. If you are just coming, welcome. We have not really gone far, so we are still lucky.
think um, Ayodele, do you have something to say? Yes, yes. Okay, please, please go on. I wanted to ask that um, this HTML language, yes. can we also see the content of a web? Like, yes, it is, but then we can't really say it's the content, content of the web. Because okay. there are other ways to inject content on the website. Okay. Now, there is, with JavaScript, it's possible for it to add content to a website. Okay. With, um, a backend, it's even possible to fetch content from the backend. Oh, okay. so that's why I explained HTML as the structure. The okay, just structure. the structure. Yes, yeah, just the structure, exactly. It's the, the one that. Um, yes, because, okay, basically, HTML is. Um, Basically, built layer on layer. You know the call layer on layer. Let's say you have um, your house now. The way they build houses now, you cannot okay. just start building houses from the top. You can just from the foundation. Just, exactly, start from the foundation, something like that. So that's how HTML okay. is built. That's how it says the structure. So it's layer okay. on layer, like this. Now we have this one one block, okay. another block on it, then another block on it, something like that. That's yeah. how HTML okay. is built. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah, you're welcome. So that's how that's how we call it the structure. Do you guys understand? I think when I'm answering questions like this, I feel like I'm like talking to everyone. Does everyone understand? Does everyone understand? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should start with this. Can you see this? Yes. Okay, yeah. So this is a tribute page that I built a long while ago. And then as you can see, this is HTML. This is just HTML. And then you see how it looks. It's not looking good. Fine, all the content that I need are on it. There are structures already on it. But now, is this looking fine? Is this looking okay? Imagine if, let's say, you as a client now, you ask for a website and then someone builds something like this and gives to you. Would you be happy with that? It's not someone looking attractive. Responses. Sorry? Well, I said it's not looking attractive. Well, exactly. So now that's well, where... Is, um, well, it's looking busy. It's looking busy, but then it's not looking attractive. Yes. There is no colors, nothing at all, just white and black. Yes. And the thing, like, things are not aligned to us. You can see there is like this long yeah so now that's because there is no css on it that's why i said html is like the skeleton the human skeleton and then we can now call css the human flesh since when once there's flesh on our skeleton we all look beautiful basically our flesh is what's giving us the beauty that we have so if they like if we take if they take out the flesh if you take out our skin i don't think we're going to have anything so now see html as the skin the beauty part, the when I say the lifeline, and so let me uncomment out the HTML part of this. So now with HTML, we have something like this. This is like better than what we had before. Because with this, now you can see that okay, we have different colors. There is the background, there is a, a particular thing around the image making it look beautiful. That's the job of CSS. CSS is what adds color. CSS is what adds life to it, you get. So now I've explained HTML, I've explained CSS. And so now we have JavaScript. Now JavaScript is mostly known for functionality. JavaScript is known for adding purpose to a website. Let's put it like that. Let's say, do we I explained it now, the human body, the skin, the skin. Now take JavaScript as the organs. So without the organs, the human body can't function well. So let's now say, okay, uh, we have someone that that has a let's say brain damage. Fine, that person is going to be alive. The person is going to do things. The person is going to do things like every other person you can print, you can see. But now the way that person process information will be different. The way that person do things will be different from every other person. That's because the main thing adding purpose to that person's life is um, having issues. So without without the brain, I don't think a human being can function fully. You can't function fully without a brain. Because it's with the brain that you process information, it's the brain that once they tell you A, you can reply with B. 
But now without the brain, there's nothing like that. And so that is how JavaScript is. Without JavaScript, you can build a website, fully functional website, get to look good. But now the interaction with that website will be different from a website with JavaScript. So with JavaScript, you can do things like um, hamburger menu toggling. You can do things like collecting form information, like login, logout. Like now, without something like JavaScript now, once you go to that Unilever portal, it will be impossible for you to log in. Because for you to log in, there have to be authentication. And all this authentication, they are handled by things like JavaScript. Do you guys understand? Yes, yes. 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 OK. Yeah, so throughout the course of this program, we'll be taking these three important things. We'll start with HTML, structure, and from HTML, we'll go to uh, CSS. So this is the um, style sheet, the styling, to make it look beautiful. Then from CSS, we'll go into JavaScript, the functionality part. That is, to most, of, to most um, individuals, that's always like the most difficult part, JavaScript. Because HTML and CSS, they are, when I say they are English linked, if you understand the English world, uh, writing HTML and CSS won't be hard at all. Because basically what you'll be writing is English, things that you know from your normal um, English class. Like, okay, when you hear something like a form tag, you know, okay, form means it will collect input. When, when I hear something like input tag, that means, okay, I need to input something. You hear something like a button, you know, okay, once you click on this button, something should happen. So that's what HTML is. And then for CSS, now starts something like background color. If you look at it like normal main English thing, that should tell you that, okay, background color is a tag that's meant to change the background of the website. So now starting something like font size. When you have font size, font size means, okay, it is the um, size of the font, that's the text size you want to change. When you start hearing something like um, border, you know, okay, border means having something like a box around things. So you know, okay, border is this. So that was basic English. But then when we now get to JavaScript, JavaScript will not start running on other, that's in other um, syntaxes. These are things that JavaScript is also English related. You can like understand things. But now you now start having other tags that are not, that are more of, um, more of computer-based languages than human-based languages. Because things you now start writing in JavaScript, you start writing um, functions, you start writing const statement, start writing if else statement. Understanding all these things, it's very, very easy. Because it's just basically you taking the normal thing that you know. Like if this, then this, if this one should happen. But if it doesn't happen, this should happen instead. So that's how JavaScript is. But now we just have we just have like other let's say we have rules to follow in JavaScript. Yeah. So jumping right into it, do you guys have your PS code installed? Yeah. Yes. 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 I want it to be that, okay, as I'm writing something, you are writing along. And so that way, um, there won't be conflict. Because to me, I feel like that's like the best way to learn. As I'm writing, you are writing, and then we understand each other. Okay. Okay. So this is... BS code. For those asking, come in, let me go to their documentation. Yeah, so for those asking, just go to your your browser then type on VS Code. So you go to download. I already have VS Code installed, but then it's not difficult to download. Once you go to download, you just choose whichever one you want if you are on the Mac Pro. Oh. Can anyone see my screen? Yes. 
Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah, so once you go to VS Code to download, you can see that there are options here. Those on Linux system, this is for Linux. Those on Mac OS, this is for Mac. Those on Windows, this is for Windows. And so individual system have different requirements. If you are the 64-bit system, if you are the 32-bit system, if you are on uh, Universal or Intel chip or Apple Silicon, whichever, whichever device you're using for. So you just click on it and then it downloads immediately. But then I won't be downloading since I already have it um, installed on my system. And so I'll just be starting up a new project. Who else is on their system? Is anybody on their system here? Yes. 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 Okay. So do you have do you have VS Code installed? Yes. 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 Okay, now. So now you just go to your go to any part of your system. So like start up a new project. You can go to your documents. You can go to download. I don't think I have any free parts. So this is my my own folder structure where I want to like start my own project. And so I just create a new file. And then I'll name it. One. So now there are different there are different ways of there are different ways of starting up a project with VS Code. You can open your VS Code, drag the folder and then drop it there in VS Code. You can use command line. I don't know if you guys know command line is CMD. CMD is that thing that people usually see in movies that makes people look like Hackers, but then they are not hackers, it's just a normal thing on your laptop. And so I'm going to be opening this folder with both of them. So I'm going to start with CMD. So with CMD, instead of the normal way, but I say the ancient way of doing CMDs, you go to like your desk, your desktop screen. Then if you on um, Windows, I don't know, can you see my screen, please? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, because I just went straight to my desktop. Yeah, so if you're on your desktop screen, you can, if you're on a Windows, you can say Windows X. Windows X is going to bring up this sidebar. And then you now have something wrong, search, I like different things. You click on run. So it's the same thing. Most of the time, it's never, it's never the same. I can just search for it and just say CMD. It will come up, then you click on OK. Those on um, their device, are you guys following, please? Yes. Yes. Like, I'm that, that, sorry, so sorry, sir. Is that the command flow? Is that the command flow? Yes, this, yes. this, this is command flow. OK. So it is what's CMD? What is CMD? CMD means command prompt. Command. Like, what's yeah. CMD? So that's something like this. It's, uh, well, it's something that can access your whole laptop. From CMD, there is no part in your laptop that you cannot access. Through so, yeah, here, you can open different files. You can find pictures, videos. You can open videos. You can open everything. It's just basically, OK, see your laptop. See your laptop as a two-way device. There is the ugly part, and there is the beautiful part. Everybody is used to the beautiful part. Where you can click on, you click on this, open this. You click on the particular folder. The folder opens. If you want to watch, you just click on VLC. VLC opens up. If you want to listen to uh, music, you just click on Spotify. But now, before all this interface started existing, people used to access their file through CMD, the ugly part. So now, for it to access your file, you have to start writing. Little codes, little codes to access your file. So I'm saying CD this, CD that, CD this. So now let me just let let's just get practical now. So now I have my folder underneath music, week one underneath music. So now for me now, from here now, I'm in my HP now, and then I want to open File Explorer. Then I'm starting things like 
CD, Zora, CBB, CD that, CD, CD that. But now this is the old way, the difficult way. It's going to waste time and though. So instead, what you can do is, when you open your power manager, you see that first thing I did was create the week one folder. And then I open the week one folder. So you can now go to the top, this part. Those people on their laptop, can you, are you following please? Um, I obtained the title and I picked, you said you were in your laptop. Are you following please? Yes, 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 I'm following you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm following. Okay, so now this um, top, you can just click on it. If you click in front of it, it highlights like this. Then you write EMP. The first thing, automatically you are now saying the whole line that was there before. You want to run everything directly on CMD. Then you tap enter. So you see my command prompt comes up immediately. But now the path is different. Automatically it has gone straight to my week one path. So that we have users. See means your local storage. Then users, then HP, that's the name of my laptop. Then music folder, then we call folder. Those on um, your laptop do work for you. Who we'll tried that out? Yeah. Can you please call me again, please? Thank you. Okay. So you create your folder inside any folder that you want. I named mine with one. You can name yours anything. Yes, yes, yes. I have. Then you click in front, the top. You see the top here that you have yes. this the music with one. You click yes. in front of it to highlight. Yes, okay. Then you now type CMP. Okay. That means we want to open a particular, we want to open this part in our command prompt. Yes, yes. Then you type enter. So now this okay. comes out. Okay. Now, if you installed VS Code the right way, if you type code, plot, that's code and then full stop, then you type enter. The VS Code is meant to open. So it is echoing. I can't hear you well. Oh, it's echoing. Um, okay, a minute, please. Ah, uh, Can you hear me? We can hear can, you. Can you make the, the background of your VS Code white? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. So, can you hear me now? Is this better? Yes. Yes, yes. Um, sorry, hope it's not echoing now. No. Is this still echoing? No, it's not. No, no. Okay. Yeah, so... Let me just go back to the... Who's this one? Is this yeah, so you click in front and right? Hmm? I am clearly. Oh, um, I think I can't hear you. You can't hear me clearly. I can hear you. Don't say you can't hear me clearly. Yes, I said I Yeah, like your voice is low. It's low. That's yeah. the it's now it's not, it's not loud again. Right. No, yeah. it's not really um sorry about that i have to like connect my airport i don't know because okay now is this better can i hear you now and um is this still echoing no no 
No. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah. So you can just okay. You type CMV. Now, if you install VS Code the right way, there is this um code line of code that VS Code attaches to every CMD line. So it's more like a shortcut for you to open a particular file directory in VS Code. So for you to call up that command, you just hit code, hit stop, enter. Automatically, it opens this uh, folder on VS Code. As you can see, my VS Code came up. Yes, yes. So yes, 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 yes. It worked for you. It worked yes, for it's you. Worked. Just tell me yes. It worked for you. It worked for me. As yes, well. it worked for me. Yeah. I will take the time. Yes, it works for me. Okay. So now the first thing you get is your. Well, no, I... Sorry. Did someone say something? Can you please make your visual code um, background white? The. Okay. Someone's having issues. Can with... zoom in a little. Yes, I will. I will zoom in. I will zoom in a little. Let's see. So I do love my little screen, but now I'm zooming in. I think this is. Yeah. So, cousin, can, I, can everyone see my screen clearly? Yes, 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 yes. So now, so now there are different extensions. So, someone talking about extensions there. There are different extensions that you can use with VS Code. And then the main aim of these extensions is just like make your code some to make your code neater, some of them to make your life less stressful. Because, truth be told, when you start writing a lot of code and um, Start having thousands of lines of code. Very hard for you to be adding indentation, and it's very hard for you to arrange code. And so that's why there is um prettier here. So prettier helps like arrange code, but today we won't be going into prettier at all because we won't be writing much code. When we start, when we get into the advanced level, we can now like add prettier. But then this um the go live, we are going to be installing this one, that's on live server. So we can see our code real time. So every change you make immediately you save. It just adds that code straight up. Because every code we write, we can't see the results on our ID. That's what this is called. There is code. ID means um, an editor, it takes editor for editing code. So every code you write, you can't see it on VS Code. And that's where your browser comes in. Either Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Unix browser, Brave browser, any browser you love using. And so for every change you make, for every code you write, you get to see the results on uh, you get to see the results on your browser, that's Chrome or whichever browser you're using. And so for you to add extension, you have to come down here. I'm sure everybody on uh, VS Code has this part here. Forget about it. Yes. 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 Click on extension. Yes. Click on extension again. Under this search extension, you know, type server. I already have mine installed. Yeah. Well, now you just search for this live server, this particular one, then install. It's already installed on my own device. So, can you, can you guess it? Have you found it? Yes. Okay, so if you click on install, should not take no, time. please. Can you recap? Can you recap? Yeah, so you go to extensions, you click on extensions. You want to click on extension, you go to the top, and then you see search. So over here, this way is search. So once you just click on it, then you search for live server. So once you search on live server, you just look for the one by retweet day. Has anyone installed it? Yes. Is, yes. It, is it visible at the yes. bottom like this? Yes. Can I see something I do like? Yes. 
Yeah. Still installing. Still installing, okay. Installed already. <clears throat> so, and um, I still can install. Installed. Yes. Go I, uh, yes. Go live. Okay. So now let's go back to our project. That's like the only important extension that we have for now. As time goes on, if we have time to like jump into other things that require extensions, we'll be coming back here once in a while to install. So now, you, now go back to your explorer. You can now say now the name here should be the name that you give your your file because now we are inside the file territory. You can close up the server. So now the name here is it the name you give your file? Mine is with one. So it's change with one because this is my folder. With one folder. Can you see that everyone? That's this on the assistant. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes we can so hear you. I would, I would love, um, let's say, whenever I ask a question or can you see this, can you see this, I would just love to like, give you back a response so that I know I'm talking to myself. So now, if you over on All the, right. if you over on the left hand side, you're going to see some options here. This is for creating a new file. You can see new file. This is for creating a new folder. Your screen is not displaying again. Sorry? I can't see anything on your screen. Anyone your else can see anything? Displaying. I can see I things on your, your screen. I think it's your network. I can see your screen. It's probably your network. I can see your screen. I can see your screen. Oh. I think, I think maybe it's your network. Yeah, so I can see now. Okay, okay. So we have new file here. We have new folder. We have refresh um, explorer. Then we have collapse. So collapse is just to let's say we have multiple things open. You click on collapse, everything's going to close up. And then we have the one for new folder refresh. But now the important one that we need right now is the one for new file. You can click on Ctrl M. If you click on Ctrl N on um, PS Code, it brings out a new file. If you yes, yes. if you double tap on an empty screen like this on VS, if you double tap on it, it brings, also brings out a new file. Like there are multiple ways of creating a folder. So whichever one is cool by you. For me, I'm let's say I'm used to creating mine from here. Because I always love to know that okay, whatever file I'm creating is underneath this folder structure, underneath this folder structure. Because as time goes on, you start working on multiple folder structures. Sometimes you can have like let's say six folder structures. You have to see the one folder inside that one, another folder, another folder. And so when whenever you're creating files and then you don't want to mix up the files, creating it from here is always like the best option. Since you know, okay, you're creating this and then it's going to a particular structure. So new file. Now, HTML, every, for you to be able to run HTML, for your browser to understand that it's an HTML file, you need to add the extension name to it. That is .html. If it is CSS file, you have .css. If it is JavaScript file, you have .js. Do you understand? Yes, yes. Okay. Oh. Everything I'll be talking about since I hope everyone understands. If there's not, if there's something you don't understand, you can just like call me back to it immediately so like I explain it to you. Because you have to like understand this basis, then you can ask start moving from here to like more complicated, uh, more complicated parts. But if you don't understand this part and then you get to the complicated parts, you start getting mixed up in between. So do you understand? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> We are going to create our file here. You can name it anything. I can say with one. I can no. say fresh boy. You cannot. I can say hot boy. But then I just want to name. We have this. Um, let's say there's this default thing. Developers do just call it index. That's index.html. So as you can see, immediately I added the, the HTML file. I created an HTML file for me just by adding the extension. So as everyone be able to create their 
in the system of our yes 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 so now html if you get what i said from the beginning i said html is block on block that means the way html is layer on layer you are placing one on another one on another and that's why you see whenever you run a website on your browser and you start loading it's always loaded from the top to the bottom it can never load from the center upward or from the bottom to the top it's always good from the top to the bottom because every every HTML code is structured layer on layer. So that's from one to two, three, four, to five, to six, something like that. So block upon block. And so there are different things that you have to like send to your browser for your browser to know that this is an HTML file. And then there are things like doc type. Doc type is like the first thing. Use doc type to tell the browser that okay this is an HTML file one then I wanted to run it is more than there there is doc type there are other meta languages and so blocks let's say I won't let us waste our time creating everything one after the other because when I started when I started learning how to code I have to start creating every tag every syntax one after the other I learned how to code with um, Notepad plus plus. I don't know if you guys know what Notepad plus plus is. Notepad plus plus and um, sublime text. Sublime these are, text. Yeah, these are IDs like um, VS Code. But then the thing about these guys is they don't have a lot of sweet functions like VS Code. And so over there, you have to like, start creating everything from the beginning. You have to start writing every single open case, every single open bracket, every single close bracket. But now with VS Code, life is easy. If you just type on this um, exclamation mark and they press enter, it's just, it's, it gives you the, um, that's it gives you the break up immediately, like straight up. There's no need for it to start writing. When I say in that code, I'll start writing each tag like this one after the other. And trust me, it is a lot of stress because a lot of time you get mixed up and then you see some unnecessary words. But with VS Code, everything is easy. I should not be able to create the uh, doc type here. No. Did not work for everybody. Mm. Sorry, sir. I've not been able to like create my index HTML. Like I just finished downloading the live server. Okay. So you just go back to your folder structure. Just go back to the top. You see this explorer. You know this is extension, this is explorer. So you click explorer, then your folder. Okay, you click on new file. I have a You click on new file, then you name it whatever you want to name it. Dot HTML. Still you not getting it? No, sir. What's the problem? I'm clicking on the explorer. Do I need to have internet con um, connection? Yeah. No, you don't. No. So after clicking on the explorer, can you see your folder here? Like you should be seeing two folders. Yeah. One is open editor, and the next one is whatever name you give your folder. Like I gave mine with one. Can you see this? Yes, yes. Now, click on this. Have you clicked on this new file? Okay, uh, yes. Then now, yes, I am. Okay. Now, you now see something come out here and ask you for a name. Did yes. that come out? Yeah, now, so now you can also yes. put whatever name you want. You can say index dot, but it must have the extension dot HTML. Yeah, but it gave me the name index HTML is not valid as a file or folder name. Did you create the folder with name? Like, see, you see, man, I said index. Okay, can I say index again? Let's say hi there. Dot H T M L. If you get the uh, extension wrong, it's going to give you that error. 
26 HTML. Okay, there should be no space before I write the index lines. No space at all. Everything all together. Okay. Yes, I've seen the mistake now. So it's working now. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Please, I'm not sir. Thank you, ma'am. No, the the job that I'm talking about, your exclamation mark, if you are on um, Windows and then you're using the normal England courtesy keyboard, it should be shift and then one. You click on shift one, exclamation mark. So is that working? Can you guys see that? Yes, sir. So now if you click on enter, you should not really bring something like this out. Yes. Ah, wait to shift shift one and enter. Abby. Yes, shift one brings out the submission mark. Then enter. Then enter. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. Does everybody have this? Yes. 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 Oh no. Okay, now. Yes, we have it. No. Okay. Oh, it's saying no. What's up? I when I, on, when I want okay. to enter. It's not coming up. Sorry, please. Can you start all over? All over from where, please? Yeah, from index.html. So, have you created the index.html file? Yes, yes, I have. Okay. So now, you just, you just say you create your exclamation mark. No space, nothing okay. at all. Once you just click on the exclamation mark, it comes out like this. You have something like this showing MS abbreviations and the rest. Can you see that? Yes, abbreviation, yes. Yeah, then you click on enter. If you don't click on enter, you can select it. Like, I want to show something like this. And you just select the first one. So now, can you see that now? Working fine? Yes, yes, yes. Does everybody have it now? Um, those guys that were talking, yeah. um, I think I lost their name. Okay, after this class, I'll just look at the attendance so I can know people that attended this class and then how I can like cram everybody's name. So sorry to ask. You said I should click on shift and one, shift one, Abby, to bring out yes. an exclamation mark. Mark. It, as I said, if you're using the normal pretty England keyboard, now, there are different keyboards. Some people may be using Japanese keyboards. Some people may be using German keyboard. So these um, symbols usually like get misplaced among the keys. So now, since it's your laptop, you should know where that particular icon is. Yes, yeah, shift and one. Shift one. One, yes. So it should bring out options. Like two, MS abbreviation something, and then another one that I share. Like, so just click on the first one. Okay, fine. Sorry, um, what's the percent? Could not get it, please. So, working fine. Are we cool? Can we continue, please? Yes, we can. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, so now, doc type. Let me like explain everything again now. So now, the doc type, the doc type is like the first part that you start with for HTML. This is the communication not communicates to the browser until the browser is an HTML file. You get because every browser, the, every browser is more like a dummy. Let's put something like that, like a dummy. So what the browser understands, there are just certain commands. You have to command the browser and tell the browser, okay, Mr. Browser, I am passing this to you. Okay, Mr. Browser, I am passing this to you. And so Doc Type is telling the browser that this is an HTML file, and so the browser runs, and so the browser runs the um, file like an HTML file. Then the next thing we have the HTML syntax HTML. Okay, what do you think? Yes, I'm with you. Are you with me, please? Yes, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, we are with you. Okay, so now we have the HTML wrapper. Every HTML file, whenever you start writing HTML, you have to specify there is the doc type 
then everything inside the HTML file become that's like a wrapper tag. So before we like go really deep into it, I really like want to like explain some that's some HTML things to you, so you can like understand the what HTML is HTML is mainly for. And so uh, change this. Made like created for. Then I created a Splat file for teaching today, and then suddenly before the class, I can't find the file anymore. No, this took on me. HTML. The initial scale. Okay, we have our definitions here. Let's see, get started with this. What's HTML? So, um, HTML, can you see my screen, please? Yes, yes. we can. Yes. Yes. HTML is a markup language that tells web browser how to structure the web pages. If you, if every time I've been since I told you, HTML is a structure, and then it tells the browser. What to do? Yeah. So now it can be complicated or as simple as the web developer wants it to be, just in the mouse. And so HTML consists of a series of elements which you use to enclose, wrap, or mark up different parts of content to make it appear or act in a certain way. So now the key words that I wanted to um, take now was the enclose wrap and markup that's basically what html does html is either an enclosing tag a wrap tag or a markup tag so now the enclosing tag can make content into hyperlink to connect them to another page it allies and so on then the oh, yeah that's what the enclosed tag then the wrap tag, wrap tag mostly cover up everything. They're like very important, or I would say the most important of all. Because if your wrap tag, if a wrap tag is missing, your HTML is going to come up with an error. And then there's the markup, uh, the mark, markup of missing tag. So tags like that, markup tags, they are basically normal tags that you write things inside. So now, with the explanation I just gave just now, this HTML. That you see here, hmm? it's a wrap tag. But if you look at it, there is HTML here and there's HTML here. I don't know if you notice that. Yes. Yeah. So that, it is wrapping through everything because once you start coding, once you start building web um, web pages, your HTML must be wrapped. Everything must be covered inside this HTML tag. Because if it's not inside, if I remove this tag now, there's going to be an error, and then there's going to be an error on your browser. And then your browser start leaking. It starts something like what they call this memory leak. So it's never good. And so we have this HTML tag to wrap. So now, aside after that, we now have the structure. You understand the structure I've been talking about? The block. So HTML, like a human being, HTML have head and body. So now things that you put in your head tag, they don't get to show on the uh, website. You won't see them on the website. Your users won't see them. Nobody will see them. But now, this, they are like very, very important parts of the website. Since the most important things, just like the human body now, nobody gets to see the brain. Or have you seen your brain before? It's not possible. You can't see. You can't see the brain. But now, the brain is still the most important part of the human body. Without the brain, the human being can't function. So now, just imagine HTML like that. Head and if you look at now, there are two things here. Let me close this up. You see, head and then um, body. That's because the most important things that we need, they are all inside the head. But now, what we want the user to see and communicate with, they will be inside the body. So, just the way we have our normal human body now, our head, our brain is the, the most important part of our body where we process information, where we run different things. But now, 
not everybody gets to see the brain. Not everybody gets to see what's happening inside. But what we do with our body, what to do with our hands, the way we talk, the things we see, uh, objects we move with our hands, communication like we shake people, we punch people, we fight people, we deter people. These are things we do with our body. So that's the only thing. Um, that's the, that's the only thing another person can see. But nobody can know exactly what is going on in your head. That's how it is with HTML. Nobody sees, nobody knows what's going on inside the head, aside the developer. But now, whatever is happening in the body, everybody gets to see it. So now, in the head tag, we have important tags here. There are meta tags. Meta tags are tags that, let's say, they specify, they also used to specify different things on the website. With a meta tag, you can do a lot of things. You can add, like now, this particular meta tag now, meta, meta tag, meta, name, report. This one now is telling, this tells the website that, okay, only scale to an initial, have an initial scale of 1.0. So one thing I've noticed is, if you have a website without this meta tag, whatever you're building there is going to overflow. It's good, it is going to spill out. So instead of having, let's go back, instead of having something like this, that is full from left to right, full, you start having extra things inside this particular part. And now, there's something called responsiveness in um, HTML. Responsiveness is, okay, we can see everything. It looks okay on my screen. It looks on every other person's screen. But now, when you're working without that particular viewport, that without this particular tag, the website is never responsive. And so you see now that the head, like I said, is very important. Without this one, anything you're writing, you're watching, no matter how times, you are going to have issues. So there are other tags in the meta tags. There are tags for adding names. There are tags for adding um, details. Like sometimes, I don't know if you have noticed, let's say someone shares you a link on WhatsApp. And then that link, you have not clicked on the link yet. But above the link, you start seeing things about a particular website. You start seeing that they write on things like maybe, OK, this is the website to Google. This is this, this is that, this is this. And then you see an image. All these things you are seeing just because someone sent you a link. And you don't click the link yet, but you can see some little details about it. So all these things, they are all pushed by meta tags. There are different meta tags that are into that. And so let's say along the course of learning, we'll like talk about them one after the other. So there are different meta tags that, that does that. And so that's like, so it's more like an introduction to tell users that, okay, before you click on this website, this is what this website is all about. So now inside, same edge tag, we have link tags. So now link tags are tags that you use to connect to your style sheet. Like let's say you are using uh, CSS now, you have external CSS, and now you want to add that CSS to this part. You don't, you can't put it in the body because it's not something that you want anybody to see. Instead, you have it in your link tag, you have it in the edge tag, and then you type, you type in my link, Thing about remember the thing I talked about uh, VS Code. VS Code gives you options. Don't worry, this way we always write this thing word for word, comma for comma. Now with VS Code, VS Code just gives you options like, okay, this is what we have here, this is what you can use. And so, if you, you see just the link I typed in, we have a lot of things here. And then the most important things I'll be using is link CSS. So, if you click on it, you see something like this. We don't have our style sheets yet created. But now, this href, it's more like a part um, directory. We'll talk about that one later. Let's say when we get into um, anchor tags, once we're talking about anchor tags, we'll talk more, we'll discuss more about the href. But then you can see with this, now you can add an external style sheet to your HTML. So this is what this thing does, the edit tag. Then we have title. So now, title tag is the heading, the heading name of your website. So if you're on your website, just go to your body tag, type, type H1, then just type hello world, and then you click on go live. That's tell you put then automatically create something like this. Come on, I want to apply. Have you done? Is it working for you? It's not working for me. 
So can, can you come back again? Can you come back? Yes, I guess I'll stop. Wait, that HF said, can you do it again? Uh, you don't really need to do this. But now if you come down and you click on link, you type on link. Now, there are different options here. So for me, I choose CSS. So this is how you add um, a CSS file to your HTML. You get you guys understand. You understand what I talked about CSS. I said CSS is like a life, a style sheet. Yes. Yeah. Now, adding CSS to your website. This is how you add CSS. But I won't be going much into it because we have not started talking about CSS yet. Once we are done with this table and then we transition to CSS, then I'll discuss more about the link tag, discuss more about parting and then every other thing concerning the link tag. But for now, I just, just like talk about the tag. So we can know how important the F tag is. You understand? Are we cool? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, if you go to your body tag and then you just type H1, H, typing on H alone, there are a lot of options already. But that one want is H1. So if you click on H1, it opens something like this. Then you now type. Hello, well, I won't be explaining this tab yet, but what I want to explain now is the document that's the title. So, do you have this already? Yes, I click on go live. That's people that has um, that have that live server installed. If you have live server installed, you can click on go live. But now, another thing that you can do is if you go back to your folder. I already have my index.html created. I created it from VS Code, but if you go to your folder, you can see it here already. So what you can do is you can drag and drop. You have to drag it like this. Then you go to your go to your um, browser, select whichever browser. Let's say it's this. okay. So then you just drop it. Hmm. <laughs> Open it. Surface, can you go back? No, like you said, we should use our live server to run the hello world. I can't find it yes. in mine. Okay, what can you not find? Is it the live server? Yes. You see this place at the bottom? Do you have good life there? What place? Please use your at mouse. The the, at the bottom of the um, VS Code, do you have good life? No, sir. But I have downloaded it. I installed. Yes, I did. And then you don't have Go Live. My VS Code is different from yours. So I don't know. Would it be somewhere else? What type of VS Code? How different is it? Well, it's for Windows 7. That is too big. Yes. Still doesn't change anything. Mm. Still doesn't change anything. It's meant to be at the bottom. That's the whole life. But now, if you don't like have, yeah, is it like an abbreviation or the live server they abbreviate or something? Go life. If you click on go life now, go life is like the part where you start up the live server. So now, live server is already linked to your VS Code, and I clicking on go life now, you like you activate it. But now that's I that's I showed the other part for some on some certain laptop, I don't know. Go life doesn't work. And so if go life is not working for you, you can go back to your folder. Um Deborah, can you go back to your folder? Okay, so that's what's like index index folder. Index, yes, yes, index. 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 So now you can just Double click it. It's open on your Chrome or whichever um, internet, whichever um, sorry, whichever browser you have. Did it work? No. Double clicking it did not show anything. It didn't show anything. 
Did you open Wait, on your is browser? The index? No, it didn't open. Is the index supposed to be under the folder? Like, I need to find a folder first. Did you? Okay, where's the folder you created initially? That's week three, yes. Yeah. Week three is there. Yes, I named is it week index, three. Yeah, is the index inside the week three folder? Y yes. Can you see it there? Yes, I can see it. And then do you double click on it? Okay. Like you open it like every yes, day. Uh, yes, I did. And then still not working. No. Did you let me share there? my screen? Okay, please do. Did you? Okay. Oh, I do Can you see? Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Let me pin it down. Okay, yeah, you can. I can see your everything. Did you save it? You did not save now. No. Control S. Control S. That's what I'm showing. Save. Save it in what form? Like on the like document or something? If you look at the top. Yes. Thing you, make, you have this step with here. There's this dot showing at the top here. So this now side. the top of your let's say your index.html. Look at the top here. If you have not saved, you have this yes. zero and then it's showing yes, on the I've already saved it. On save file. Yeah, save it. Now go back and check. Open it on your okay. room. Let's go back to your folder. That's the main folder, Internet Explorer. I think I need to your file explorer. Okay. As a folder. Okay. You're not on I the should folder. Double click on it. Not that folder. Not. Look on my screen. This folder. Okay. You cannot minimize VS code. Minimize VS code. Okay. Yeah, then go to your folder. Yes. So index will be there. Now double click on that index. Yes, I am. It's running. Yeah. So now can you see the error? Let me see. Should be coming up on this. It's not showing Why anything. Why is it black? It's not meant to be black. Hello, world. Look, this is what you will see. Ah. Okay, no. Go back to the, go back to your code. Let me say. Okay. <laughs> it's very and that one is inside your body tag. Another. The H1 is in your body tag, like what I created. Is the borough still there? The borough. Okay, I think we lost something. Yeah, so every other person, can you see it? Is it working for you? Yes. Yes. So, are you using the live server or are you using the drag and drop? Let's so, if you're using live server, live server. If you're using live, live server, server. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, please. It's not working for me. Oh. Okay. So, like after typing the hello word in the body tag. What else yeah. am I going to do? You save. Control S. Control S. You can save. Control S is bringing out abbreviations from you. Control. Yeah, you click on the. Can you, can you see my pistol here? You click on the file, then Control S. Or if okay. you. 
let's say you make a change somewhere over here at the top you can click here also to save right so save at the top here you see save all so save all so that automatically saves it too so if, you, if your control s is not working here you can just save okay it's working now sorry can you click on can you go back to where you said i should save like if the control s is not working top left this icon here save all Yeah, you're showing me collapse holder in Explorer. That's not that one above it. So if that um, underneath open editors, you know, there's the normal file, then there is open editors above it. So now underneath that open editor, underneath that open editors, if let's say you have an unsaved change, it will be showing one unsaved. Can you see something like this? This one unsaved. Nope. No, my own that doesn't is... have um open editors, just in the with one index.html. I mean to have this open editors at the top. Because you you only won't have it if oh. I close it. You know, in my open editors it'll still be there, but there'll be anything there. So now is it working now, Taiwo? No, it's showing me new file, new folder. Click on the index.html file here. Okay. I've clicked on it. I've clicked on it. Yes. Now, at the top, now, what are you seeing? You're like, yeah, where this, um, are you seeing this close? Yes, okay. yes. Or is this some sort of, is it like this? Or is it showing a dot like this? It's not showing a dot. It's showing the X. That means it's saved. That means it's saved. Yes, it is. So now, go to your browser. It should work. Are you using Live Server? <laughs> yeah, I'm using Live Server. Okay. And um, what can you say? Like, what should I click on after? Full line. The bottom. Go live. Can you see go live? Yes. Click on go live. Automatically, is going to start start up the server. Okay, let's see. Working now. Nope. What are you saying? Just showing me live server. And it's not doing anything. It, is it showing something like this um port five thousand and five 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 hundred? Like yes. In that good life. Can you see this? Instead of good life, are you seeing this? Am I seeing what? I'm not seeing anything. Did you click on good life? Yeah, I did. And then the issue is on like starting in server. No, no, no. Can I see where your cursor is? It's over here. That's here. If I dispose it, yeah, if you are seeing, yes, you were seeing this before, good life. You were seeing this before. Like I'm seeing the same thing I've been seeing on your screen. Good life. I'm talking about the bottom. You can as well open the folder. Hi, are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, so if your goal life is not working, you can okay. just go to the folder. Then double click on the index file that is there. Still not showing anything. Sorry, can I say something? What um browser do you use, Taiwo? I'm using Chrome. Chrome, and it's not opening. Like you're not seeing Chrome opening at all. At all. At all. So 
Okay, you. can you open your file like this? Can, have you gone back to your file explorer like this? Hmm? Sorry, my laptop is hanging. Sorry. So I think I, I I would not like to delay every other person. So maybe if you just continue, then I'll go back to record it last. So okay, no problem. I guess on Monday we should have there's going to be like a let's say a community a community class on Monday. Yeah, so maybe on Monday, people that are having issue will just tackle your issue one on one on Monday. Cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, so fine. those using live server, can you see your response already? Can see hello world already? Yes. Yeah. But the main thing I wanted to now take note of is yes. This thing. So, you can see the name is document. That yes. I took this is what the name is the file. So now instead of documents, let's not say we name it something like my first HTML class. And then you say there isn't like someone literally you say automatically to already get on the web. So now if you go back my first HTML class. If it's working for you, just tell me it's working, please. Working. Okay. Mm, the other, is he everything, everything, or anything, anything? Yes, I guess you know. Okay. So you see, is it working for you too? Yes. Okay, that means working for everybody. So now that's like the type tab changes the name of the file. Every time the editor, editor. Yes, yes. That, if you're using the, if you're already with that H1 and then you go back, you see this, you can see that this thing is showing here, like I said, the body. But now the title that you wrote, you see it's not showing here. That's because the only thing that will show on this part of the screen is just whatever you write in the book. Your H1, that, or whatever thing you put there. But now whatever you now put inside the H tag, you don't get to see them there. Some of them they are going to be here, your favorite corner and the rest. But there are things that won't show on this part. So now that I said, your HTML is like your the normal human body. Whatever is running inside the head is something you can't see. That's the brain. The brain will you can't see it. But now whatever you now use your the rest of your body to do is something everyone can see. So that's how this uh, part works. Do you understand? Sorry, I can't hear anybody. Yeah, I understand. Okay, so moving on. Like, uh, one other thing I would love you to take note about HTML is there are different types of HTML tags. And um, every HTML tag, they all require opening and closing tag. I don't know if you have noticed, majority of the tags we have here, they are all in twos. You have one year, there's under each one year. We have body year, there's under body year. We have eight year, there's under eight year. That's because for most of the tags in HTML, you have, you have, to, you have to like open and close. So it's more like, let's say, okay, you have a cylinder now. You have a cylinder and then there's, there's like air, there's air trapped inside the cylinder. So now, if you're adding more things inside the cylinder, they get to stay inside that cylinder. But now, if you leave one end of the cylinder open, you notice that whatever you're putting inside the cylinder, let's say from the center, you're pushing something inside the cylinder. Whatever you're pushing inside the cylinder, you start leaking out from the other side. That's because you did not lock it. And then now imagine if you have multiple cylinders and then you have one leaking out. There's going to be a problem because whatever content is leaking out from that one cylinder gets to affect every other cylinder. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's how that's how that's how that's how um, HTML tags work. So for every opening of a cylinder, you have to close that cylinder. If you don't close the cylinder, you are going to have issues with the other tags. 
So that's why you have opening and closing tags. But now there are now let's say there are now special tags in HTML that they do not require a basic the closing tag because instead of just being a cylinder, these guys are not these guys are not cylinders. They are more like um, let's say they are more like a core that does not that do not require closing because if you arrange them, no matter how you arrange them as they are, as they are as a core, their contents can spill out. Do you understand? So now tags like IMG now. This is a tag for adding images to your file on um uh, that's the HTML file. If you notice now, immediately I type IMG, it did not come with a closing tag. You know, every other one now, like when I type H1, H1 came with an automatic closing tag. If I type IMG, it did not come with a closing tag. That's because IMG is a particular syntax. That does not require a closing tag. Do you understand? Yes. So now another example of this is the BR tag. The BR tag is more like a brick. Let's say you have a very, very long line of code, and then at some point you don't want the line of code to keep on going straight. You want it to break. You add this BR tag in between to break it. So that way the next code is starting, the code is starting from the next line. I will explain more about that later. But yeah, I just want to explain to you now that it also does not have a closing tag. Because it is part of those those um, cups that do not have that do not require a closing tag. When I can look at something like um let's say span automatically it has a closing tag. Because this span is a cylinder, a cylinder that requires closing. Okay. I hope, I, was, I hope I was able to like explain it like the Paris minimum. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Yes. Um, when Winifred, where did that guys? I can't tell you guys where it's going. So I don't understand. Okay, I don't where, know. how do you not understand? From the past where you said, um, Come on. from the past where you were like opening tags, I don't understand. Okay, so now HTML tags, HTML tags, most HTML tags they have closing tags. I use a cylinder to explain. You know how a cylinder looks like? A cylinder has um, two flat sides. So now let's now imagine those two sides are doors. So this is the opening of the cylinder, this is the closing of the cylinder. And in between the cylinder, you have content. So now for every content you put inside a cylinder, you don't want it to spill. Don't want to spill out and affect other cylinders. So you have to keep this cylinder closed. You get okay, sir. So now that's our HTML is for every opening, there's always a closing tag, except for special tags. The special tags in um HTML, they don't come as cylinders, they come as cups instead. So this number then they, they are come as... they come as cups. I'm using like that's I'm trying to like break it down to something that will okay, okay. You get okay, yes, so they come as cups this time and then they do not require okay. closing. So, you know, it's possible for you to arrange some cups now. You just keep on arranging them, arranging them, and then even without closing, okay. them, because they won't spill, so they won't spill out of it. That's how this particular tag okay. So, an example is the image tag. The image okay. tag the cup, it doesn't require closing. So, so how did you create it? So, now I just type IMG. And okay. then out and I clicked on enter. So VS Code, every tab that requires closing, VS Code automatically provides you to close once you create them. Every tab that does not require closing tag, when you create them, VS Code is not going to ask to closing tag. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So now data size might open like closing. So now in um Yes, good. There are different types of tags again. That's this one, like different tags. because, like, you can classify um, HTML to different particular types of tags. So, now these tags in HTML, they are tags that you can put inside other tags. Now, you know, the way remember when I said HTML is um, a block, a block that means for every tag you create, like, if you 
save this thing now. If you save everything you have written now, as if you wrote this H hello world and then this PR router, and then if you go to your browser, you see something like this. We have the hello world, we have the idea, the image that because we've not put anything, so both of them they are still blank. What's image that but they are here also? So now if you see the hello world, the idea, first is a block, and then if you look at how we wrote our code, which one came first? Hello world is first. Then the idea is last. So now let's say I remove all this. And then I create a power. Then in my picture, I'm going to say, this is a new post. Many. Save this and then go back to your browser. Yet, this is a new course of learning. If you, as you can see, sorry, uh, sorry, so I wanted sorry? to ask. Okay. When you go back to your browser, do you require internet connection for it to like show, or it shows automatically? It shows automatically because the thing okay. is HTML, HTML. At some point, in HTML will start to require internet connection to run some files. That's okay, when you are. Let's say you are getting external resources like your text, you are getting external style sheets. So this one's you need active internet connection to keep them. But now everything we're doing now with is on our device. And so we don't okay, need, we do need internet connection for them. Okay, you understand? Yes. Okay. So now if I put another let's say I add H2 tag this time. I said this is the search box. Back to your browser, you can see this is a fresh source. Even though this is bigger than this, notice that this did not come before this. Instead, it is just aligned to the way it is here. This came first, second, third. And then if you look at the browser, first, second, third. That's because HTML, like I explained before, is a block that comes, okay, as I'm writing each tag, they start to like follow one after the other. So now, there are now other tags in HTML that do not follow this particular. That's um, it. They do not follow this particular block structure. That's because you can write them inside other blocks, and then they are not going to follow the normal this drop down, drop down, drop down way. So now, an example is an example is span. So if you go to this API tag and you add this, and then you type span. Inside the if you go back to your browser, notice that it is still on the same line. Payday. It did not create a new line. That's why it is not a block element. But in a this in um, HTML, there are block elements. And then there are, I think, um, oh, what's in the name? But then there are block inline block elements. elements. Inline elements, exactly. Thank you, Sam. There are both block elements, there are inline elements. So, block elements are the ones that whenever you create them, they create a new line. So, every time you just drop a new block element, they create a new line. But now, for inline elements, whenever you put them there, they don't create a new line. Instead, they just continue from where the line before them is. Do you understand? So, now we have, we have another inline element that causes um, elements to act like. The block element that's the one I explained before the break. So if I add the BR tag here now, that break the break means after this particular point from here downward, create a new line. So if you go back and then you refresh, that's not oh, yes, and to work. Oh, yeah, it drops. So break like add space and then say after this one, a new one. So now let's now say we have two span cards now. Like I said, span tags are inline tags. That's tell you that these two tags should stay close together like this. 
You see, this is the first span, this is the second span tag. Because the spans, they are in line. It's not starting from the next line, like the way this guy started. But now, let's not say we now want these guys now to act like block limits. We want them to start from, this, from the next line. So we say break. The break means after this point, whatever is coming afterwards here, you add another one. You get it. So now if you now go back to the browser, then you refresh. Why is my break tag not working? What am I doing now? Nothing now. Sorry, I thought you said the break tag does and the break is the element of tag or call it does not have a closing. Yes, break doesn't. But why is there a before the H2 you kept a slash then a closing tag where you oh, are right now? Yes. Okay, yeah, so automatically so you always have this okay. But then what I mean by opening and closing is we don't have something like this. Um, but this is opening and closing dog. But you see this just like every other one, like this H2 is the same thing. But now the break tag doesn't work like this. The break tag just comes like this. We just one. You get. Oh, thank you. So now, aside with our inline function, we have other inline things like, let's say, instead of. On this sorry, side, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Sorry to how the class. Okay, I'm listening. I, I still don't care why the break tag add um a forward like uh, why the break tag add a forward slash after the br. BR. Okay. Yeah, the one you type the other time, like you type something the other time, break tag, and you put a slash in. You can see now the break tag I created. This doesn't have forward slash, right? So the break tag. Yes, yes, yes. There was one you, you typed the other time. So it's, the one you typed the other time I was asking about. Yes, I was about to explain that now. Okay, so aside writing HTML and CSS, I have other programming languages that I write. And so when you must, when you start writing the JavaScript framework, React, React does not allow you to leave your elements like this. So even though it won't have a closing tag, the React usually require you to add that closing tag inside. And so that's why every time I created this like this, and if I press Ctrl S, automatically that break tag gets added because I have a React extension installed on my laptop. That does it. So now let me now say, let me switch off. Oh, what's that switch of this extension? Quite difficult. I have to understand it. But now, if let's say once this extension is switched off now, once I click my control S, that thing won't be added. Like by default, now let's just let me create this now without oh, I have to save. And then once I save, put here adds it. But then if you are creating now on your own laptop, even without that closing tab, it works. I don't know, has anybody tried that? Deborah Win Winifred. Yes, I've tried it. It works. It works exactly. Yes, it works. It the works. It works. Yes. It works without that. But now, when you now start, yes. when you start writing, because <coughs> frameworks for beginners level, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is nice. But for industry level, let's say you want to work with this, you want to start making money. Companies will always ask for the framework because they want someone a bit advanced. And so when you start writing frameworks. Framework, they won't allow you to have a tag. Fine, it does not have a closing tag, but it must have that closing tag behind it. But if you look at the normal one, the tag is placed in front of it. But now, for, um, for frameworks, it is behind. That's to tell you this is your normal HTML, it is an opening tag without a closing tag, but then it must have that forward slash inside. So now, if I create my I don't know IMG tag. By default, it does not have that forward slash because IMG is a tag that does not require a closing tag. But once I save, 
automatically my Prettier adds the forward slash for me. So that whenever I'm writing frameworks, because I'm used to the JavaScript, you know, I know it does not have a close tab, so I won't add it. But immediately I save, it does me to add it so that during build time, I don't get an error. Do you understand now? So if you are just writing a normal HTML or CSS, your code is going to run fine without adding this thing at the back. Run okay, I have just 13 minutes more for this class. Okay, let's just track it up real quick. And so we also have other inline tags. Let me create a key tag. So there is something called Lorem Ipsium. Lorem Ipsium is just what I say, a dummy web tag. A dummy web, not tag like um, details, that helps developer put in false information. So let's not say you want to create a tag with like 20 different words and then you don't start thinking of typing 20 different words. You can just type Lorem 20. Type it together, like Lorem 20. But my policy, I have default 20 words. So if I say something like Lorem, Lorem 40. 40. Now, this thing now is a bit chopped up here because if I check my let me see if I click now, and then I go to the web, I'll see all these things like this. And I can add break tabs, like add more space in between them and all. So now, has anybody tried this? Did it work for you? Yes. No, 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 no. Okay. What's the shame for you? Yes, it works. You just type Lorem. Lorem. Yes. Then the number of words that you want. So let's say I want the word to Lauren 50. Automatically, I get 50 words automatically generated for me. Mostly, um, it's mostly Latin. But then, as far as it occupies space, I don't think we care about that much. So now, let's now say inside your Lauren now, you are the space like this. And then you want to make this part or a part of your Lauren bigger than the others. We have a strong tag, it's an inline element. Just type strong. Strong. Without opening a closing tag. So now you can now copy this guy and then put it in between them. So now, like I said, every HTML, for it to like have details, you have to wrap. So now I'm wrapping this detail now inside the strong tag. So once I save, I go to my browser. You can see everything is normal except the one that I wrapped. It's bold. So strong is just like bold. If you want to make the text bolder, you just wrap it in strong. Has anybody tried that out? Yes, yes. Working fine. It makes the die pack fair facility the and bold. Bold, exactly. Yes, to make it bold, yes. bigger than the others. So, quite strong. We also have metallic. I think I forgot the name of that tag for making it metallic. But now there are like other tags like that. You can make it metallic. You can like add different things. So I don't know today. We're able to like talk about the basics of majority of um, HTML tags, I guess. So let's talk about the H tag. So H means okay. sorry. Um sorry, sorry for interrupting. Sorry for yeah, yeah. Did you want to say something? Sorry. Hello, hey. I, I just wanted to remind you what is used for the italic, which um, is um, I. Oh, yeah, I got it. Sorry. I, yeah, thank you. I'm stepping full italic. What makes it italic, which is the I tag? Yeah, so if I tag, get something in. Hi. So, yeah, you can see part is bent. Not like the others. Yeah, thank you, Moyo, for that. 
So let's talk about other tags. So now um, I'll be clearing the majority of the things here. So now other tags are let's say uh, hierarchy level of um, tags in HTML. So mostly it's mostly text. Uh, they span from H1 to H6. So each one of them different, let's say different sizes. So we have each one hello world. Hello world. And then if you create hello world. Then H4. Hello world. Then H5. Hope you all are following. Yes, yes. Yes. Now we have H6. The heading. You are increasing the heading. Yes, you can see the value is increasing. Because yes, H6. Edda tags read from H1 to H6. So I created from H1 to so H1, H2, H3, H4. H5, H6. So now if you go back and check now, you can see they all have different sizes. This is H1, the biggest, the boldest, H2, then H3, H4. Go back H4. Again. I don't understand. Huh? Can you go back again? I don't understand. Okay. Add that tags. Like they are used for specifying the let's say hierarchy level of text. Let's say you are creating something now, like that thing that I showed you before. Let's go back to this page. Yeah, you can see now. I want that to be like hierarchy level. This should be the biggest, followed by this, followed by this. I don't want this one to be bigger than this. Because whenever people are coming to your website, you want them to know that this particular part is of more importance than this part. Let's say you are reading an article now. If you look at it, let's say the edging of the article. It's always bigger than every other part of the article you get. Yes. So now, how do you now specify? How do you add this hierarchy level to each one of them? That's where the header tag come in. So now, header tag ranging from H1 being the senior. H1 is the biggest and the boldest of all. That's the always it's mostly used for the main part of the website, like the heading of the website. Then there's now H2. H2 is now like a sub heading. So let's now say. We have a website that welcome to the daily planet. Now underneath welcome to daily planet, we now have different sections like game section, food section, photography section. Use that H2 tab to now specify that okay, there is a level to this. Welcome to daily planet is the biggest part. But now there are like different sections underneath daily planet. That's why now use the H2 to specify. Then let's now say underneath the H2. We now have underneath the gaming section, we now have Okay, we have physical games, we have virtual games. You can now use H3. So now, if you look at it now, you have arranged everything according to hierarchy level. With H1 being the most important, welcome to daily planet. H2 being the sub heading that different sections, being the gaming section, food sections. With H3, that means it's a subsection underneath the subsection you get. So now, to create this, use the H, this tag, H1, most important. H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. So if you go back and then if you look at everything here, H1, welcome to the planet, is the biggest. The next now, we now we are not specifying that. Okay, in daily planet, we have the gaming section and the rest. We also have, sorry about that. Then we now have something like this. So now let's now see, underneath each one of them, we now have different sections. That's why we now have H3. So now you understand the hierarchy level. Yes. You guys understand? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just four minutes more. Mm. Okay, so I would want to like maybe let's just adjourn this class on today. I was not able to like hit my target today. But I was planning to give assignments today and make sure okay, nobody begin to sleep until the next class. Give everybody assignments. But then I don't think that'll be possible. Because I've only just gone through the eight tags. Aside the eight tags, they are like multi quarter tags, plenty of plenty tags. And then we have to like, discuss everything before I can start giving you assignment on HTML. And so we'll see each other on 
Monday. Yeah, during the community session. Those are what time? I hope that means. Sorry. What time? What time on Monday? Yeah, the time on Monday is not so certain because I work I work remotely, but then sometimes I just have okay. these impromptu meetings. Oh. And so until Monday, before I can know what time on Monday, because by Monday morning, I already have my schedule for the day. Okay. But, so I'm just fine. Okay. Thank so, you. Excuse yes, me, sir. Boss. Sir, I wanted to ask, how are we going to save all what we just did? Or will you just save the maybe not practically there? Or we need to yes. do something to make it once stay? You, once you save Ctrl S, even though you okay. close the browser, let's say I close my browser now, like that, and then I just go back and then CMD. So you can open it. No, in fact, let me open it. There. Oh, if I open it that way now, here to put the screen to clean. I'm to straight down that way of opening the folder. But if I now go back to my CMD, that's inside the folder. I'm going to say to close it. So once my VSP starts now, You can see, continue from where I stop. Okay, sir. So once you just press Control S, it's saved already. As far as you don't delete the index file, because once you delete this file, everything is going to that start again. So as far as you don't delete this file, you are cool. Next time you open your VS Code, it is there waiting for you. Any other questions? Okay, sir. So one last question. Mm -hmm. The same part we used to open a folder, a new folder in the VS Code, that's the same part we'll be using, right? Yes, if you want that. Like we'll Yeah, don't forget I said that there are like we'll both space. Okay. Let's now say, okay, I want let me say let me open a new window now. New empty window. No file, no file is there, it's just blank. So it's taking time. I have like 10 windows open for years. So now, if you look at this now, under the folder parts, the same open folder, there's no folder, nothing at all. So you can click on open folder. From VS Code directly. Yes, from VS Code, open folder. Then you go to the exact part that you put here. Mine now is underneath music. If I click on this, my record. I cannot click on record and say select folder. It's going to open our folder. Or another way, okay. you can just go to the folder parts, like now music now, and like I just drag this whole folder, I just drag it. And then drop it. Boom. The folder is there already. So see, there are like multiple ways to add folder, whichever way is easy for you. I'm um, personally I'm just used to using that CMD way to open my own folders. So you can use any other way, you can drag and draw, you can just open a blank window on VS Code and then select the folder you want to create a new folder from there. You get yes, sir. Yeah, could this bank for Yeah, um yeah, thanks for <clears throat> everything. So my question is this. Uh when we started, you said we should use uh one exclamation mark like that to bring out all these tags. Yes. Yes. So when I click the exclamation mark on my own laptop, it didn't bring, you know, it said it would bring one and two. So yeah, it didn't okay. bring out anything. When I click, when I click enter, it will just go to the second line, the next line and tell me to exactly. That was what it did. But the other things you showed, the other uh, H1 and the rest and the other ones, I tried it and it worked. But the first one that would create all these other tags, the head, the body and the rest that didn't work. I don't know if there's another way to it. Thank you. Okay, so now this particular way, if you're starting up, if you're starting up a new project, it is never there. This is just VS Code doing developers good. And so if you're starting up a new project and then that thing is not there, then that means that let's let me start up a new project now. Let's say I have a new project now, and then that thing is not there. But that's just go the old, the old way. 
Sorry, can I make okay. a suggestion? Okay, so I found a new way in. once and like on the blank space, just type in HTML. Oh, it will bring out the HTML type. Like maybe HTML5 or HTML. Okay, so once we just bring up everything. Okay, now it's a different thing. The doc works also. Yeah, there is doc. Yeah, doc. So if okay. this doesn't work, because this doc type, doc type is like the main thing. So if doc type, I doc, doc works too, but then the doc type at the end is not here. So now, if the doc, doc and the uh, Five. And let's try that one also. Did you see that? Um, it is not only yes. I type of HTML in the HTML five. And let's click, click on that. That's good. So now, if you know, if this guy is not working, that means your VS code is not bringing up this suggestion. And then, if VS code is not bringing up this thing, I doubt if it's going to bring up the others. But you can try it. Are you still with the system there? Yes. Yeah, so you can try all these ones. You can try the doc. I tried HTML5 and it came up. And it came up? Yes. <laughs> then that means you already have yours because different, so that's a different systems, different VS code and the different compatibility. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Moyo. So any other, um, any other question? Question, 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 so question. Yes, I can hear you, TLC. Okay, the only thing I didn't get was the beginning when you did that CMD to open the VS code. I could not like do that, but I could open it normally, like just clicking on the VS code to open it. Okay. So I was, I was do you want to yes, you Sorry? could explain that part again. I was thinking you could okay. explain that part again. Okay, so CMD, like I said, is on command prompt. It comes to every laptop. And so you have to go to, let's say, my the main part now. What do you do? Say documents now. So if you put your um, file explorer, first thing is documents. So you have to locate that particular file they are doing now. And then mine is under notes music. And then from music, week one so now after that we can now go to the top the top here can you see this part this part that's showing arrow yeah so if you click in front of it it selects everything okay if it doesn't select everything once you click in front of it you can just clear everything and then type cmd okay once that from enter automatically the command will come up okay okay thank you i'll do that yeah. now you just can say hold dot to open VS code. Once you do that, automatically opens VS code for that particular part. So you understand? When you opened it, you typed code inside. Yes, code, then full stop. That's period. Code, okay. full stop, then enter. Put the okay. space between the code and the full stop. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So any other question? If there is no other question, I'd like to say thank you all for joining me. I know I'm a very boring person and then I talk very fast. You guys should bear with me. I'll get better at this. So we we'll know that. And then okay, I'd say my DM is from today. My DM is officially open for you to ask any question. But then please, if you want to ask question, don't let's say don't spam me. Just make sure it's underneath just one message. So you have something like, hi, hi, my name is this. I'm part of the Empower program. My question is, just make sure it's just one. So once I just say that, hi, good morning, immediately I'm going to reply you. So please, you can just enter my DM anytime, any day. If it's 4 a.m., it's, if it's 5 a.m., 6 a.m., I'm always awake. So I'll reply you. Okay, now, so. Have a nice day, everyone. See you all on Monday. Bye. 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 Bye.
My yeah, thank you. It's precious to you, precious. Yeah, I'm here. Just wait, wait, wait after the poor precious. Thank you. <laughs> 